Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about the most famous container orchestration tool, Kubernetes. So we will look at what is Kubernetes, why did it come into picture, the main components or concepts that somebody needs to know to understand Kubernetes and the advantages of using it. So let's get started. First of all, what is Kubernetes? So Kubernetes was initially developed by Google. It is also known as K8 because K, uh, Kubernetes starts with K and then there are eight letters and S. So it is also known as K8 and S and it is a container orchestration tool. So we have actually looked at what containers are but to manage containers or their, the life cycle of containers we definitely need a container orchestration tool and Kubernetes is the most prominent and widely used container orchestration tool. It is an open source system which can automate the entire deployment, scaling, management of containerized applications. It was initially developed by Google but then now it is open sourced and everybody is using it. What Kubernetes does it, it groups containers that make up an application. So any application can have multiple containers. How do you manage them, the whole life cycle, the whole scaling, everything? Kubernetes does that for you. So what it does is, there is an application, it may have multiple containers. Kubernetes runs those like a logical unit and easily helps us to easily manage them. Kubernetes can run on-premise, it can run on public cloud, private cloud, as well as in hybrid setup. So essentially, Kubernetes can be used for any kind of setup. Public, private, hybrid, cloud, on-prem, any kind. Now, one important thing to understand is why did we even need containers or something like Kubernetes to manage those containers? So if we look at the traditional deployment, how usually or previously the traditional deployment used to happen. We would have hardware, we would have an operating system running on top of the hardware which is controlling every action in the computer and then we have multiple applications which are running. They are utilizing the OS, they are also using the hardware via OS. But as and when the architectures became complex, the scaling needs grew, data volumes grew, the architecture had to evolve. Then something called contain, uh, virtualized environment came up. Now what is virtualized environment? We have looked at that also previously. Is that we have hardware, we have operating system, but we have one layer of hypervisor on top of the OS, which actually creates multiple VMs on the same physical machine. So it's one single physical machine, but we are spinning up multiple virtual machines with their own operating system, their own apps running within that VM on one physical machine. All cloud providers like Amazon, Azure, Google are heavily using virtual machines. So this was the second stage of evolution. But when we started talking about virtual machines, after that, our architecture even evolved further. And then something called containers came into picture, which are much, much lighter than a VM. And what happened was, here still you have hardware, you have OS, but instead of a hypervisor and VMs, you have a container runtime. And you create containers which are much more lightweighted than VMs, because they do not contain their own operating system. VMs had their own operating systems and that's why there was an advantage. You could run a different uh, OS version on a uh, physical machine which has a different OS. So a Windows machine can have a Linux VM and vice versa. I mean, so that uh, VMs were typically introduced to have multiple uh, environments or multiple VMs created on a single physical machine. But with containers, what we could do is they don't have carry their own OS, so they are very lightweight. Weight. But what they do is a container is something which packages everything or every dependency that you need to run your app. All the bins, the libraries, everything packaged together into one single logical unit. So that is how the architectures evolved from traditional to virtualized to containerized. But when we talk about application, it's not one application. In a production environment, in a live environment, you would have hundreds of applications running. You may have hundreds of containers that are running. How would you manage them? 
So that is when this whole concept of a container orchestration tool which can manage this entire life cycle of a container came into picture. And that's where Kubernetes came in. Now let us look at some of the things how on Kubernetes to understand what is Kubernetes, how does it work, what are the different components. So first of all, when we talk about Kubernetes, Kubernetes will be basically a cluster, a cluster which contains a set of worker nodes. The worker nodes are the workhorses or where the actual work is getting done. And these are simply known as nodes, a node in a Kubernetes cluster. What does this node do? These are the ones who are running our containerized application. So we create containers and we need something to run those containers. So in a Kubernetes cluster, there are nodes. Minimum one node will be there, but usually we will have couple of nodes to create a cluster. Every node will run containerized application. So that's a Kubernetes cluster. It will have at least one worker node. Now let us look at the architecture. How does a Kubernetes cluster look like? So if you see a Kubernetes cluster will have multiple nodes. Now you will have an API to access that Kubernetes cluster, but essentially it will have one or more nodes and there would be a control panel, this dotted boundaries of a control panel. Control panel is someone who is coordinating between the nodes or actually running different things on a cluster. So if we see a coordinator, it has something like scheduler, it has a configuration, something to store configuration like etcd, it has API server. So there are multiple components in this control panel and it will have the Kubernetes cluster will have multiple nodes. Each node will have a kubelet running on them. So every node will have a kubelet. We will look into what kubelet is, what is a node and all of that. But at a high level, a Kubernetes architecture or a Kubernetes cluster would look like this. It would have a control panel and it will have a number of nodes talking to the control panel and doing the work. Within the control panel, we will have API server, we will have control manager, etcd, all of these components. So let us now, and this is just, we are talking about how Kubernetes would look like, look like at a, a high level. Now let us look at each of these components and try to understand what do they do. So first of all, very basic of Kubernetes cluster is a node because cluster is a collection of nodes. Now, what does a node mean in a Kubernetes cluster? A node is a worker node where the actual work is happening. And what Kubernetes runs does is, it runs the workload by placing containers into pods to run on the node. So it is a three uh, things put together. There will be a node. A node will have a pod and the pod can have multiple containers running inside it. So it is containers placed in a pod which is running on a node. Each node will have primarily three things, kubelet, a container runtime, because you have to have a runtime to run the containers and a kube proxy. A node, the node that we're talking about here can be a virtual or a physical machine. So depends what we are using. It can be a VM or it can be a physical node. This whole node or every node in the cluster is managed by the control panel. And this node will have, like I said, a node has a pod which has multiple containers. Containers are nothing but your applications that you're running. So it's a node, a pod, and then in that containers. So a node will have all the services that are necessary to run the pods. And it will be managed by the control panel, all the nodes. So this is the uh, single logical unit which come, so multiple nodes will combine to form a cluster. Now, what is a pod in a Kubernetes cluster? So group of one or more containers which have shared storage and network resources plus they have a specification on how to run the container. This is inside a pod. So inside a pod we will have multiple containers that will have their own shared storage, uh, shared storage and network resources and there will be a specification that we would specify how to run those containers. The content of pod is co-located and co-scheduled. So a pod is there on every node. This is the pod. 
what is cubelet we saw this that every node has a process which is cubelet to so cubelet is nothing but a node agent every single node will have cubelet and will it is a node agent which will help the cluster to talk to each other and execute task on a node because node is where your actual work will happen so cubelet will be there on every node act as an agent and will help in executing every task on that node and also in communication within the cluster now we looked at in the architecture we looked at control panel components and we looked at nodes so we spoke about nodes what are nodes pods cubelet all of that now let us look at some of the control panel components to control plane components to understand what is happening in them so first of all there was one component called etcd and you will hear this term a lot when you talk about kubernetes what is etcd just think about it as a key value store which is backing up all the data uh, in the cluster so the cluster data is backed up it stores all the config information as well so it's a highly available and consistent key value store okay and you can treat it as a backing store for all cluster data in kubernetes then what is a cube scheduler in the control plane there is also something called cube scheduler which we saw what is that that is something which is used for scheduling it watches for all newly created pods so pods can be created and destroyed right so it watches over all the created pods and if there are no nodes assigned to the pods it will do that function of assigning a node where the pod can run because a node will have to have a pod inside which you will have multiple containers so cube scheduler's job is to search for a node for the newly created pod so mainly uh, when we talk about control plane these are the three most important ones etcd the scheduler and the scheduler the etcd these are the two most important ones which are there and there are many other components now the second part is the node components so node will typically have every node three things a cubelet so we looked at what is a cubelet right it is a node agent which is helping in the execution then there is a cube proxy and then there is a container runtime these are the three things that will run on every node so in a nutshell kubernetes cluster will will kubernetes will run in a cluster it will have multiple nodes it will have a control plane which is helping in managing the nodes and doing the communication every node in that cluster will have these three components and the kubelet will help it to run the task now look, let us look at what are the advantages of using using kubernetes so of course one of the biggest advantages is we can't manage so many containers uh, manually so there has to be some manager or some orchestration tool who will manage those containers for us so that is kubernetes it makes our life easy it helps in service discovery and load balancing so we don't have to worry about scaling load balancing that is done by kubernetes it helps in automated rollouts and rollbacks it can do storage orchestration for us it also is self healing so we don't have to worry if some pod goes down or something happens to the cluster it is self healing it manages the secrets and configuration so etcd is managing the configuration so all of these things are coming as a part of kubernetes we need not worry about scaling we need not worry about how do we load balance how do we do rollbacks etc how do we maintain our kubernetes cluster or how do we rather maintain our containers all that is taken care by kubernetes for us so it makes our container orchestration uh, path very very easy so i hope this gave you a quick snapshot of what is kubernetes why it came into picture what are the major components and what is the advantage of using it so please keep uh, liking sharing and subscribing to the channel to get more interesting videos thank you so much